right, so this is kind of the second quarter uh, review video. I fit every unit into six boards as quickly as I can. So here we go. This is the Constitution before ratification. So this is taking place right after the American Revolution. We want our independence. We know the Articles of Confederation is too weak to really do anything. So we meet at the Constitutional Convention, all right, to begin creating a new government. All right. While we're there, we kind of settle on two big things. The Great Compromise, equal votes in the Senate. House of, represent, House of uh, Representatives based on population, so that's a great compromise that we make there. The three-fifths compromise, so three-fifths of the total slave population will count towards uh, your total population in the House. So that's some two compromises we come to that kind of appeases smaller states and bigger states. All right. At the Constitutional Convention and with the rise of the Constitution, we also have two groups that form, the Anti-Federalists, who are opposed to the Constitution, and the Federalists, who support the Constitution. All right, so anti-federalists were those who were against the Constitution. They were afraid the Constitution did not protect people's rights and states' rights and were afraid uh, that the national government would get too much power if the states', government, states governments weren't strong. Federalists thought the states did a good job of protecting rights, so they didn't feel like they needed to include people's rights in the Constitution. Therefore, we created the Bill of Rights that was added on to the end of the Constitution. Everybody's happy. The Constitution's ratified. Boom. We have a stable government. All right. Next little bit here, westward expansion. All right. Thomas Jefferson becomes president after George Washington. All right. He purchases the Louisiana Territory. We explore all that area, the Lewis and Clark expedition. We go out, we grow that area, we learn about it, and he wants people to move out there. Remember, he has that agrarian society philosophy where he wants people to farm and live on their own land and, and love their life just like he has. All right. Under him. And under President Madison, the U.S. is having some growing issues overseas, particularly with Britain. This all led to the War of 1812 between the United States and Britain. All right? And there was no clear winner in this war, but we did have a strong sense of nationalism or a strong sense of pride that rose up in the country for Americans. All right? James Monroe becomes president next after the War of 1812, and he issues what, he, what, he's, what is known as the Monroe Doctrine. It kind of does three things. It says America is closed to further colonization. Any colonization attempts would be considered a threat, and the U.S. would stay out of foreign affairs. All right? This kind of showed the world that we considered ourselves to be a world power, which was a big step for us under the Monroe Doctrine. Then we kind of moved into the Jacksonian era under Andrew Jackson. All right? Jackson won the 1828 election. He opened up the government to the common man. All right? He allowed more people to vote, and he also used the spoil system to get some of his backers into the government. All right? Unfortunately, though, under Jackson, you had the rise in sectionalism, which is the opposite, obviously, of nationalism. So instead of having pride in our country, people are having pride in their regions. And you start to develop the South, the Northeast, the West, and they all have different interests in the national government. The national government has to balance that, and it becomes kind of an issue. And then you develop, because they're balancing that issue there, you get the national governments versus states. And that kind of leads to the nullification crisis, which is a big thing that Andrew Jackson's known for under his era. And these were tariffs that clearly kind of favored the Northeast, and they were hurting the Southern economy, and South Carolina threatened to secede. Um, and the doctrine of nullification was proposed that said the states had the right to nullify or void, all right, nullify or void any federal law that they deemed to be unconstitutional like those tariffs. These tariffs that the national government put on were taxes on manufactured imports. And since the South was a farming economy, they didn't have a lot of manufacturing down there, so they had to import a lot. So every time they imported something, they had to pay a tax on it. Well, the Northeast was an industrial society, so they made a lot of their goods. All right? They didn't have to import that much. So since they didn't import that much, they didn't pay that much in taxes, and the South felt this was very unfair. And this is kind of called the nullification crisis, and it allowed um, – and the debate was, could states nullify federal laws like this tariff? Luckily, this was all avoided because a new tariff was created that kind of made everybody happy. So there were new taxes played out, and it, and it kind of solved the solution. But that became a big issue under Jackson. Kind of back, back to westward expansion a little bit. You have the rise in railroads. They're built all over the country this time, particularly in the northeast and along the east coast. You can ship goods all over the place. Farmers can ship their goods up and down the coast from the north to the south. Uh, industries can ship their goods down to the south. You know, you have all the railroads being used for transportation. Uh, under Jackson, you have Native Americans that were forced out to live out in Oklahoma under the Indian Removal Act. Uh, they basically were taking up land that Americans wanted, and, and Jackson forced them out. Many Cherokees in North Carolina refused to go until we started to use force on them to force them out because we found gold in those North Carolina mountains, and they were forced to walk the Trail of Tears where many of them died. 
All right, the Civil War, huge divisive issue of slavery, obviously. Uh, we were threatening the Southern life, uh, the Southern economy by trying to get rid of slavery. The North wanted it gone, the South wanted to keep it because their economy thrived on slavery. That's how they worked their farms. Eventually, the South felt unwelcome in the Union, and they seceded. They left, especially when Abraham Lincoln became president. The South seceded, and they named Jefferson Davis their president, which we remember him from the song. Whoa! Attacking the boards. Hang on. Hold on. Let me make sure it's still in the frame. Sorry. Apologize. Okay, we're good. All right. So, under the Civil War, the North initial strategy was to use the Anaconda Plan, which is a way to s surround the South, prevent any goods from getting out, prevent any goods from going in, and prevent their ability to transport anything. Shut them down. Strangle them. All right. General Lee led the South, and he won a lot at first, but eventually General Grant took over the Northern armies, and he was able to defeat General Lee at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. All right. In the Civil War, Lincoln issued the Emancip Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all the slaves in the Southern states, uh, and many of them became... Uh, Union soldiers, so that was a huge boost for the Union Army. And after the war, we entered a period known as Reconstruction, which was set up to heal and reunite the country. We also passed the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which were abolished slavery and a bunch of uh, equal uh, citizenship and voting rights for African Americans. Unfortunately, racism and the KKK helped to discriminate against African Americans for many years to come. So everything I just did right there it's kind of our second quarter review. We tackle three things, the U.S. government, the Constitution, westward expansion, and the Civil War. All right, there are a bunch of things in those, but those are the kind of things that we're talking about here. Uh, and then pretty much when we, from here on out, turn of the century, Great Depression, boom, rise, World War II, and we'll go from there.